Hey, welcome back to the Patrick Brickett Show here on Libertarian on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and News Talk 98.7 WOKI. What are your New Year's resolutions? I don't really make any, but for the last few months of 2013, I've been losing weight. So I guess I, if I had to make a resolution, it'd be to continue with that. I guess that really isn't so much a resolution to start something or do something different so much as it's a New Year's continuing resolution, I guess. <laughs> what I've been doing last year. This new year, and it's an election year, one of your New Year's resolutions should be to take a more active role in government. Or if you're already doing that, make a New Year's continuing resolution. Our government does that stuff. Continuing what you've been doing last year. If that's the case, I would suggest this year you make it a goal to get one of your friends or acquaintances or even one of your family, get them active and involved. I know a lot of people don't want to bother, but As I've said before, the people who are bothering with it are the ones ruining our country. (laughs) If we don't start bothering with it, they're going to run this country into the ground and it'll be too late to do anything about it. One of our big problems is that that government, well, we're just punishing people who earn money and rewarding the people who don't. And a whole lot of people in this country don't see anything wrong with that. At least not enough to do something about it. They haven't thought about the principle of the argument. Or even their own principles. The ones they hold. In order to avoid ending up like them. These unthinking robots. You have to always be open to evaluating your positions. This is what you need to ask yourself. When you're thinking about the principles that guide your life. You do do that don't you? You don't just take whatever is being said on TV or radio and decide, oh yeah, I believe that too. Not even what's said on this show. Now you safely can because I advocate positions and principles based on logic and reason so you can trust them, but you shouldn't. You should always test everything you're hearing and ensure it makes sense. Sometimes you have to be brutally honest with yourself. You have to admit you're wrong about some things. If you're a mature person, person, (laughs) it's not such a big problem. Mature and well-adjusted people, we can take criticism of our positions and test to see if those ideas are valid. Immature and maladjusted people, which is most liberals, a whole lot of conservatives, and in general, probably 50% of Americans, they aren't so eager to listen to the other side. They don't want to consider another argument, which might be based on logic and reason. They want to side with whichever side appeals to them emotionally, because that's what makes them feel good. I can tell you, I didn't always see things from a, a libertarian, and that's libertarian with a small l, as in the philosophy of living, not the big L as in the libertarian party. I didn't always see things from that perspective. But I didn't think I was wrong. I didn't feel like something was out of sync. I thought I was 100% correct. I was a good conservative Republican. I thought the libertarians were a bunch of wacky, pot-smoking hippies who wanted to live together in a commune somewhere. It was only when I started opening my mind up by reading and considering... The logical arguments being made, that's when I started to realize that I was wrong. Heck, I'm still battling pro-government control demons. <laughs> Every time I see those dang people standing on the interstate ramps with their signs out begging for money, it drives me crazy. And I have to remind myself, it's a freedom of speech issue. No one's being hurt by them standing there. No one is having their rights infringed upon. In fact, if I push to get them kicked off, I'm the one infringing on their rights. I'm the bad guy in that scenario. If people want to give them some of their hard-earned or easy-earned money, that's 
those people's business. It's not mine. If I know for certain that the person begging for money doesn't really need it and only wants to buy beer or liquor, it still doesn't concern me. It's a voluntary transaction between the person asking for the money and the person giving them the money. The sad part is there's a whole lot worse going on with government aid, both domestic and foreign. Our government gives away so much of our money to other people that what this person's doing on the interstate ramp, that's small potatoes. Plus, as I just said, it's a voluntary transaction. Unlike government taking your money, you're free to sit there and ignore the person holding the sign. If that was the government, it would be a tax collection checkpoint. You would be stopped and not given an option to give money or not. You'd be forced to hand over whatever the government decided you owe. No questions asked. Yes, I know it still drives people crazy. <laughs> it drives me crazy. <laughs> but fighting back those tendencies towards restricting another person's freedom is what gets us farther down the road to winning back more of ours. If the government can restrict you from standing on the interstate ramp asking for money, then it can restrict you standing there saying, vote for so-and-so for an elected office. Or it can restrict you holding a sign that says you disagree with the government. Or a sign that says, hey, I'm sorry you're having a bad day. Try to have a better one. So yes, even I, Patrick Reagans, I battle these anti-freedom demons in my head every day. But I don't let them win. I put these emotion-filled, nonsensical arguments down with infallible logic and reason, with an eye towards more freedom and liberty, not less. And that's what you have to do as well. You have to always be on the watch to catch yourself starting to fall back towards restricting another person's or even your freedom and liberty. You should always come down on that side, more freedom instead of less. More liberty instead of less. I know we're a little bit of a lone wolf crying in the wilderness at the moment, but I truly think the country is starting to come around to our way of thinking. It's not going to happen all at once. Our nation is a big ship, and it won't spend around on a dime. But we're starting to bring the bow around to a better course. Now, I have a story right here. Yeah, it illustrates this very thought. It, it's, uh, I don't have time for this. Yeah, we'll try to run into it real quick. It's about the Virginia Tea Party over in, of all places, Virginia. <laughs> this story ran last week in the Virginia Pilot newspaper, and, and it was also online. And it's talking about the state license plate bearing the Tea Party's Don't Tread on Me logo. Demand for the specialty plate canonizing the limited government's group rallying cry has made this tag one of the most coveted in the state, despite only being available for just 20 months. As of November 30th, nearly 21,800 Virginia registered automobiles sported the plates. It's the Tea Party Don't Tread on Me logo plate. Which, well, well they go on to say, which resemble the rattlesnake emblazoned historic Gadsden flag, ranking it ninth in overall popularity among the more than 200 state-sanctioned specialty plates. And the numbers look even better when compared with other newer license plate styles. Among specialty plates improved in the last five years, don't tread on me, that plate lags behind only the In God We Trust National Motto plate. And that's on 23,500 cars. Both were legislati legislatively approved in 2011 and went into circulation last year. Virginia is one of at least six states that have sanctioned don't tread on me plates. Others include Arizona, Missouri, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Texas. David Dyer, he's a past chairman of the Hampton Roads Tea Party Norfolk chapter, said the message they bear resonates beyond the Tea Party core. It's a symbol of frustration, a symbol of disgust with the government. And he has two plates on his personal vehicle. This could be another one of your New Year's resolutions to add to getting yourself and others more active in our government. If your state doesn't have a liberty-minded license plate, push to get one issued. Even go through your state tea party and get one for them if there's not one available. A lot of those guys and gals are some of the most libertarian-minded people you'll meet. 
Even more, though, so than some libertarians I've talked to. That's why, oh, yeah, we're, we're already up on the half break of the, or half hour break of the show this week. Stay with us through this break, and we'll talk more about breaking these restricting, tie, restricting ties to all things government and getting back on our road to, well, personal freedom and liberty. All that when we turn to the Patrick Riggins Show and the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. 